Big breaking news story, ladies and gentlemen, breaking Manhattan grand jury votes to indict Donald Trump. Trump will be the first former president to be indicted. The grand jury's vote regards an alleged settlement made with adult film actress Stormy Daniels during the former president's 2016 campaign. According to five people with knowledge of the matter, per the New York Times, Trump and Daniels allegedly had a sexual encounter in 2006, according to the claim. Trump is the first former president to face criminal charges after office. While the specific charges are currently unknown, an indictment is expected to be announced as Trump will be asked to surrender and face arraignment. A lawyer for the former president confirmed his indictment shortly after the initial announcement, the AP reported. In a March 18th Truth Social post, Trump said he would be arrested on the 21st and called for people to protest and take our nation back. Okay, so basically after that, they postpone the indictment, things get delayed, then a bunch of people who are, you know, conservative but not pro-Trump started saying Trump's grifting, he's lying, it's not going to happen. Then today they announced, I think it was today they announced the grand jury was going to be suspended for a month. And then all of a sudden, just well, like a couple hours ago, they announced they voted to indict Donald Trump. So obviously my opinion on this, as we've talked about it before, is this is silly and stupid. But while we have you, man, what do you think? Uh, I mean, if he committed a crime, I think they, you should have the book thrown at him. I think generally this is a misdemeanor crime. Usually there's a statute of limitations. But... Um, if records were falsified in an attempt to cover up another crime, then the statute of limitations is extended. But I don't think any of us have seen the indictment yet. Uh, so I wait till they unseal the indictment to see how silly or stupid I think it is. But hey, if he broke the law, I think he should have the book thrown at him. I Even ex-presidents, I don't agree. believe, are above the law. So I absolutely agree. I'd like to see more presidents get arrested in charge. Oh, man, make me nervous, you guys. <laughs> it's the first time in history a president's ever been indicted. No, I, I agree. I don't care. If, he, if, the, if they break the law, then they should be charged. My issue, I suppose, is it seems overtly political. I mean, how can we say that without seeing the indictment? That's a fair point. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you just said that. I said it seems overtly political. It's fair it to say be. we don't know for sure, but it <clears throat> seems that way, especially considering the dude campaigned on investigating Trump. They spent years and this was the best they could come up with that. Cohen paid Stormy Daniels to not write a book or give an interview or whatever about banging Trump. And that Trump tried claiming it was legal fees, despite the fact that a letter was put out 2018 where Cohen, where Cohen's lawyer said Cohen paid for it out of pocket, was never reimbursed. So, I mean, like that feels kind of like exculpatory evidence outright, which makes this seem political. So do you think that the payments to him that were recorded in the book, do you think that's all fake or? I th so I don't know. Well, definitely, I'm I'm oh. I'm interested in seeing what what you know what the reason. I just don't understand why, because like the thing that drives me the craziest, it happens to the Andrew Tate stuff too, where things will come out and people immediately say this is political, it's partisan. It's like well, why don't I just wait till the indictments come out and then we can actually see when the indictments come out. It might be that there's a lot of stuff in there. And it's like oh okay, that's fair, and it might be wow, this is BS. Like it's obviously because political. Brad like, campaigned on doing this. Sure, but I mean, like people can campaign on all sorts of things, right? Julian campaigned on cleaning up New York. The guy that well. That literally it makes it political. If you, if you campaign on, like, enforcing laws, like, is that a political No, he statement? campaigned on investigating Trump. <clears throat> Maybe he and thought then, Trump broke some laws. <laughs> and But it's, I mean, it's like... Yeah, I me mean, the, it seems like a fair thing to campaign show on. Me, show me the man, I'll show you the, the law that he broke, right? <clears throat> well, we're about to see that shown once the indictments are unsealed, huh? So, so here's here's what I think with the, the potential of this case. Uh -huh. you, have, you, have, you have a lawyer? I imagine you've gone through legal stuff, right? Um, not like a dedicated one, but I've, yeah, I have a couple, depending on what I'm going through, yeah. <laughs> Do you go through their itemized invoices? You might, I mean... I'm, I'm, I don't know if you do or not. Um, I've never made a single payment of over $10,000 to a lawyer. So usually they send me the Simple itemized payment. thing and I just, they bill by every 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah. The, these bills that Trump's paying are over hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think for Cohen, wasn't it like 330000 or something at the end of the day? Yeah, something, something like that. that. Uh -huh. And so I really doubt Trump was handed this invoice, looked at it and said, no, no, we can't, we can't say we paid Stormy. That's illegal. Let's falsify this record. He probably got a legal bill and was like, just pay him. I don't know, whatever. Right? Did it wasn't the didn't Cohen claim that he and Trump had personal conversations about this particular issue? I, yes, after the fact. But in 2018, Cohen's lawyer claimed mm -hmm. Cohen paid for it personally without instruction from Trump and was never reimbursed for it. Sure. Do you so, think has Cohen claimed otherwise though? After the fact, yes, Cohen yeah. has claimed otherwise. So and those I, claims were under uh, oath, correct? Uh, then he should be charged with perjury if that's sure. the case. But I was mean, the the statements by his his boss were those statements under oath? His boss? Yeah, or the, or the other lawyer. lawyer. Yeah, the other lawyer. Were those under oath? I'm, I don't know who the, the letter was filed with. So, something so, that Rosenstein said that I think was really important when he was asked for um, questioning 
this was like three or four years ago, I think, is um, he would get very irritated when he was brought before Congress and claims of the media, I think Jim jo- uh, Jordan did this to him, he, the claims from the media would be brought before him and they'd say, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he says, well, I don't think that's true. And he's like, do you think they're lying? And something Rosenstein said was, well, if you think they're lying, bring them in and have them testify under oath. So I think it's important when we look at people's statements, people will say a lot of things. We saw this with Giuliani and his claims about Trump. People say a lot of things and then when they're under oath, their stories change significantly. So I'd, I'd always be cautious to compare statements made under oath to something that some guy might have just said in a letter or said to the press or said to a friend who's rosenstein i think this was sent to the federal uh, election commission the, uh maybe yeah that's what it's it, it mm-hmm. says uh, via email federal election commission office of complaints examination and legal administration attention crystal dennis and the letter says that cohen did it of his own volition he paid for it out of pocket he was never reimbursed so i i, I would put it this way it seems political when you have a letter like this from years ago from five years ago and but but again, fair point. We'll see what happens. My my issue with it for the most part is really falsified record misdemeanor charge. We You want to get into the debate about Barack Obama blowing up a kid? Because I, I, I would absolutely love to talk about that. Um, uh, look, if they want to give Trump a misdemeanor charge and slap and lock him up for however many months a misdemeanor gets him, I would absolutely be willing to make that to, to agree. You're right. He's got to be charged. Next up, Obama. He blew up a kid. He blew up a bunch of kids. I don't know if Obama broke a law. I think I, I don't think Americans of any capacity are allowed to kill other Americans of any capacity. Don't cops do it all the time? <laughs> Not like <laughs> I mean, it seems like they in the service well, well, of doing well, 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 a little, little bit of a semantic trick you played there, right? Okay. Obviously, you can kill people in self-defense, mm-hmm. but Obama bombed a civilian restaurant in Yemen, a country we're not at war with, killing civilians, including a 16-year-old American citizen. Like you can't if you're in the military. You can't just, or a cop, you can't just go and kill somebody. Murder. You can't murder Yeah, but I imagine the justification Obama would use was that this was in defense of of U.S. interests or defense of the United States. And in his role as commander in chief, the president of the United States has offered wide deference from the Supreme Court for taking actions in the commission of protecting the United States, even if we disagree with them. Yeah, I think that's criminal. I mean, well, that's fine. But there's a difference question of like, is it illegal versus do you think it's criminal like bad, right? It's probably I, bad, I guess. But like, so, so the, the Obama administration's <laughs> argument was that they were trying to target a terrorist leader. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, I mean, you make a fair point, but <laughs> I'd be willing to argue that the president does not have the authority to bomb countries we are not at war with. Well, what about when Trump assassinated Soleimani? That was an assassination. Where was that taking place in? Was in that in Iraq. In Iraq. Yeah. A country we have an AUMF over. An authorization for use of military force. I don't think the but, authorization but, for use of military force. I'm pretty sure we were on good terms with Iraq at that point. I don't know if we had de- um, the ability to do whatever we wanted in that country. For that was a but, political assassination, though. But I there are executive I, orders that are against in the United and I, States. And I don't but, disagree. Sure, but like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that in general, there's multiple questions going on here. We can say, do we um, do we think it's wrong or bad? Probably, I think generally the United States uh, president killing American citizens is generally a bad thing, unless there's really good justification for it. But there's a difference between that versus is it illegal. And I think that the law tends to, we argued about this a little bit before the show, um, when, when Trump was doing things at the border that we thought, uh, when I say we progressives and the left got really mad at, um, the Supreme Court tended to side with him because the president has given wide deference over matters well, of What was he doing security. on the border? Um, I think it was when he was using, um, he couldn't get the funding for the border wall. Um, oh, no, no, no. It was over banning certain people coming into the country. Uh, mm-hmm. When he he named the, there were seven Muslim majority countries. And when he was running for president, even Giuliani said he's trying to find ways to do a Muslim majority ban. Technically, he's not allowed to Venezuela, do that. Venezuela and North Korea were on that list, though. Yeah, well, he changed it up, I think, after the first one got, or didn't go through for whatever reason. But once he did that ban, when people tried to challenge it, the Supreme Court basically said, uh, president, border, he can do almost anything he wants because it's the president yeah, of the Yeah, but border. that's not blowing up a kid. I didn't you know say it was I mean? blowing up a kid, but no, I'm just I saying know. that so in saying general, like, you would think that like, well, if we're talking like border, uh, if we're talking about like po- passing policy at the border, that seems like a congressional thing. Like we should be passing laws about I'm immigration not, policy, but the president can do that basically all on his own because the Supreme Court's like, hey, he's a president, national security, he can do almost whatever he wants. I think, I, th- I think, I think, I think I see the disconnect. I'm, I'm less concerned with legality. Okay. I'm only talking legality. So. Right. So I think that a president who bombs a country we're not at war with mm-hmm. should be stripped of his power and criminally charged for killing an American citizen. And it should be literally under the U.S. murder statutes that are covered by multiple state and federal laws. I don't, I, I, I don't look at it like, well, you know. Is a murder statute, could I, in Tennessee, get arrested if I bomb somebody in Yemen? Is that a, <laughs> I don't know what the. I mean, that's a good point. You, you might. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that might be like way worse than murder. It might be terroristic, international. Uh, there might like I'm pretty sure if you as an American citizen set up a bomb in a foreign country, you'd be criminally charged in the U.S. Julian yeah, but Assange I don't know if it'd be under criminal- state statutes, right? That sounds like some federal international federal. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Julian Assange is being criminally charged in the U.S. even though he's not a U.S. citizen who didn't do anything in the United States. 
Kim.com for that matter too. I mean, the dude's never even been, ne was never this country and they mm -hmm. went after him. So I just think that when we, I think it's really important that we separate conversations of what should somebody be charged with versus like, what do we think is wrong? And I, I think both conversations are important. We could talk about like, is this wrong or is it not wrong? And there's probably a good conversation to be had there, but there's a difference between that versus like, somebody needs to be charged here. Cause like, well, charged with what? Is there actually a crime broken? Or is it just like, we're really upset about this particular thing, which is fair. Yeah, the, I think the Patriot Act's insane. And the National Defense Authorization Act, insane. It gives them the, uh, I mean, it really gives the president the authority to bomb an American citizen anywhere See, in the United it, States. It, it doesn't. It gives them the right to rendition anyone anywhere in the world and then hold secret tribunals. And I think that's wrong. And I think if we're going to just play like the, the question of, is it legal? Well, then there's a whole lot of really awful stuff the government's going to end up doing if we just say, well, they made it legal so they can do it. But they, yeah, they but this is what I always fight against, like when it comes to like BLM and everything, too. Um, it, it's important to change the laws. If we want people to be held accountable, we have to change the laws to reflect what we think our moral will is so that we can actually get people to be held accountable. Because otherwise you just get a bunch of people that are like, this is wrong. Do something. It's like, OK, well, I don't know what you want us to do. Like, it's not illegal. Like, we can't do anything about it. You know, if we changed the law and it made it illegal to bomb kids in Yemen, then we wouldn't be able to charge people that were doing it while it was legal. Because it was legal when they Retro did it. Yeah, probably. But I, I mean, do we want to make it so that when we change laws, we can retroactively? No, right, right. I don't. Yeah. Anyway. Like, I don't, we're probably, I don't think we're ever officially at war with Syria, right? No. But Trump bombed the airport. Is that like, but again, he's the president. It's our military. Like, I guess the other question is, you know, in talking about Abdulrahman Al-Alaki, he wasn't the intended target. The in intended target was somebody else. And, uh -huh. he, and he had just a few weeks prior killed Anwar Al-Alaki, Abdulrahman's dad. Uh -huh. So he kills this guy who's an American citizen then argues, well, look, you know, he was a jihadi. He was preaching against the United States. He had to be stopped. Uh -huh. But then a few weeks later, he targets a civilian restaurant in Yemen, blows up this restaurant with a drone strike, killing, a, killing Anwar al-Alaki's son, Abdul Rahman. And the response was, well, we were targeting a terror leader, so it's okay. So I guess the question is, I, I'm, I'm curious as to the legalities and the moral standing of, one, does the president have the legal authority to kill anyone in any country at any time in the eyes of the United States, if he does and hits the wrong target and kills an innocent American citizen, is there a manslaughter re uh, similar charge for this kind of conflict? I think internationally, uh, unfortunately, I, I think we just don't tend to hold countries responsible. Um, this has happened multiple times. Um, I'll avoid the USS Liberty example because that's a, a whole loaded thing. But um, there was, let's see, I think Iran... Um, after we killed Soleimani in the night or the night after that followed, um, Iran accidentally shot down, I think, one of their own civilian airliners. Um, and there were wow. no charges. Nothing was held for that. Um, I believe in, for, in Iran, in, in Iran. Yeah. I and mean, they're like I, authoritarian, though, you know. True. No, I'm just saying. But internationally, um, I believe it happened over Ukraine as well. I think that there was a missile launched from Crimea, I believe. Mm. It was probably um, with the assistance of Russian troops there. There was a civilian airliner shot down there. Um, then nothing happened. The United States, I believe. Um, I think we shot down a civilian plane um, that killed like over 150 or over 200 people. That might have been um, south of Iran, I think, um, flying towards Saudi Arabia, maybe. And, and we didn't do anything about that. We said sorry. But I think that was like 200 or so. Somebody said, I mean, it happens. It sucks. But I mean, precedent internationally is that like sometimes mistakes happen. Countries do mistakes. They're bad and you pay money sometimes. But there's usually not like criminal courts for those types of mistakes. The now that it was proven, then, yeah, of course, we say. Um, yeah, but. The best I could do on short notice, the ACLU, ACLU wrote an article saying that it was unlawful. Well, if the ACLU said it. No, I mean, yeah, it's... it's when it's, they said which was unlawful. The, the, not just the killing of Abdul, uh, Abdul Rahman al-Awlaki, but the other civilians that were killed in these, in these countries we're not at war with was... It says the killing program isn't only unlawful, it's unwise. And that's about, you know, on the short term. There have been legal arguments made that Obama does have the right to kill Americans abroad. Uh -huh. But I kind of feel like, you know, we've got multiple amendments that afford American citizens a plethora of rights before they can just kill you. So that, that's, where I, that's where I'm at on the issue, I suppose. Uh -huh. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.